So my name is Aaron Krolikowski, and I am a native Buffalonian. I uh, was born in South Buffalo, grew up in the South Towns, went to UB for undergrad, and then moved away for a little bit uh, to do my graduate work at the University of Oxford in the UK. And I lived in between the UK and Tanzania in East Africa for a couple of years, and then I moved back to Buffalo. So my full-time job uh, is at the, a place called the United Way of Buffalo and Erie County. Uh, I act as the Director of Research and Public Policy, which means that I'm in charge of all of the internal and external research that we do, as well as any, let's say, government relations or advocacy-related activities. So the University Heights Collaborative is a community association. It's a community organization here in the neighborhood of University Heights. And the Collaborative acts as an umbrella organization for all of the block clubs and community initiatives uh, that we have in the neighborhood. And those community initiatives include things like the Cape and Garden Walk, uh, the Tyler Street Community Garden, the, uh, the, the University Community Farmers Market, and the University Heights Tool Library. The University Heights Tool Library is a community initiative that was started by a friend of mine uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, his name's Darren Cotton, he's an urban planner. And the Tool Library uh, functions just like a book library, but instead of coming in to borrow books, uh, you borrow tools. You borrow things like uh, lamps or clamps or you know rakes and shovels, hammers, screwdrivers, saws. Uh, and the Tool Library on one side makes sure that people who uh, either live or rent or let's say own a home or, or, or rent a space here in the neighborhood have the ability to uh, improve their home and take care of their lawns take care of you know garden if they want uh, get, basically gives them the tools they need to not only maintain their property uh, but the tools are also available to community groups um, when we did a project called buffalo tracks graffiti uh, we spent a lot of effort, let's say, on removing graffiti in the neighborhood uh, where we could and covering it up with public art in cases where we couldn't really remove the graffiti. And even though this graffiti had been there for 10, maybe 20 years in some cases, when we covered it up with public art, there were people in the community that really didn't like what we were doing. It was almost as if they were okay having the graffiti there for so long and then suddenly when something a little bit nicer to look at came about, uh, they got upset that they weren't involved in that decision, that they weren't involved in determining what was going up on the walls that they had to walk by every day. And that caused us at the tool library, our volunteers, you know, us, you know, Darren and myself who, who you know, take responsibility when something goes wrong or there is a challenge like that. And you know, we spent a lot of time reflecting about, you know, we're, we haven't been in this neighborhood for 25 years, but the people who are complaining have been. And even if they let that graffiti sit on the wall, there's got to be a better way that, isn't, that includes everybody so that when we cover up that graffiti next time, they have a role, they have a voice, they have a, uh, they have a stake, and they, can take, they have a stake in what happens, and they have a stake in what goes up on that wall, and they can feel a little bit more, a greater sense of pride uh, in their neighborhood and in the change that is happening. When we first say so put that bird up on the wall uh, even though it's pretty to look at and in the dead of winter when it's dark and gray and the neighborhood doesn't look that inviting that bird is something that invites people um, you know people just weren't happy with the process behind it and you know making sure that we are in constant alignment with our community while we don't always agree on everything the one thing we do agree on is that we want this place, the Tool Library, and we want the Collaborative, the University Heights Collaborative as well, to be for everyone. We want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to voice their opinion and their perspective and offer their input on how the neighborhood should move forward, what should go on that wall next time. And, you know, we, I don't, if I say we learned our lesson, it makes it sound really negative but we found a better way forward beyond that challenge. Most of our volunteers are attracted to the tool library really because of the, the, the concept itself, the, um, the philosophy behind it. 
They don't have to wait for somebody to open the business that they want to have in their community. They don't have to wait for somebody else to take care of that park or remove that graffiti. We find that the more projects that we do, the more people that are drawn to that philosophy of you know, grassroots community reinvestment as a way to transform a neighborhood, uh, you know, people see the results on the walls, literally. They see, they see things on the walls that weren't there before. They see trees planted on their street that weren't there before. They see parks and parkland that they can, that they can finally use. And the people who are coming to volunteer are the ones who are living the challenge. And they're also living the solution. If I go into a place where everything seems a little bit too perfect, I don't see it as a real reflection of, of human activity or human life. Uh, because human life isn't perfect. We are imperfect beings. We have imperfect societies. And I think our cities should reflect who we are as, as a people. And, you know, I guess bringing it back to University Heights, like walking through the neighborhood, people who have been here, people who may not have, they can walk through and they can see examples of the community aspiring to be something different.